Okay, it's, it's that time. It's time for the July 15th, 2024 meeting of the Yarmouth Board of Health. Hopefully everyone's hydrated enough for the meeting. And just as a reminder, this is a hybrid participation meeting, meeting and that essentially means people could be attending here or checking our website and a lot of instructions of how to participate like through Zoom. Um, let's, why don't we go with attendance? Charlie, are you here? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm here. I'm Hillard. Eric? Present. Mary out there? Present. Okay, so that's quorum. That's good. Um, why don't we find the agenda? And here it is. So, first we public comment. No surprises there. So, everyone can line up here. Mike, anyone out there Anyone's interested in making comments, questions? It's, it's summer vacation. I think yeah. people are away. <laughs> okay, because I had a long list of names, but okay, so not. <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay, so no one showed. All right. Let's go to number two. We're, we're, we're going to fly on this one tonight. If, if we could, okay. Mr. Chairman, could we come a little bit out of order, number five and number six, if it's possible? Yeah. Okay. So five and six are both directed towards Carl Lawson. One's the Pink Stewardship Letter of Support. Number five. Number six is Vegetation Right of Way. And Carl, it's all yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Carl Lawson, Hazardous Materials Inspector with the Health Department. Um, regarding the paint stewardship bill, uh, since our last meeting when the board voted to support that bill that's before the House and Senate, uh, at, at the chairman's direction, at Hillard's direction, I made some minor revisions. Uh, he then signed the letter of support from the Board of Health, and that's now been forwarded to the town administrator's office for inclusion on a, a future, um, on an upcoming Board of Selectmen meeting agenda. So that's where we stand on that item. Okay. Anything else? Anybody about it? Questions for Carl? I have a question that has nothing to do with this. Will you take one? Sure. I just see they're digging a big hole over at the Sunoco station uh, over at Station Ave. Any, any update on what's going on? How's it going there? They're, they're removing the underground storage tanks. That's part of the um, Board of Appeals decision with with the town regarding the installation of the new uh, Colby a Seasons Corner Market. Uh, part of that agreement was if new tanks were going to be installed at that newly built station, right. that there would be a net reduction of underground fuel storage in the Act Protection District. So what that uh, turn into was the removal of tanks at the Shell Station, which is complete, and now the removal of tanks at the Sunoco Station as well. And that's uh, in process. The soil sampling's been done, so we'll await the uh, test results. Right. It was more or less okay. for the community to know, that's all. Right. Sure. To, if I could, Mr. Chairman, to that point, we met last week with Andrew Singer, the attorney who appeared here about that. Um, it was ag the, uh, ag the, ag the nitrogen uh, plan for all of this and one of the things that the board had asked for was to have a landscaping strip that was going to be put forward that's going to be starting you're going to see within probably uh probably ten, 10 days maybe two weeks but they committed to that uh sure. the building commissioner and myself said you know it, it doesn't it, it's unsightly right now the cones and it's disruptive it's on a main corridor right uh, and so they committed they said that they would go ahead and do that i think it was a 10 to 15 foot strip that they were going to put some landscaping in, if you recall. Yeah. You're gonna, the, yourself and the, and the public, the community will start seeing that work being done over the next, in the short, the short uh, time future. So you'll, you'll start seeing that. It's great, it's gonna happen, it's all. They're following through. Should we let you go at this point, Carl? What do you think? You, you wanna leave? I mean, you don't have to stay for the whole meeting. Yes, he here's one more. Uh, I think there are a couple other uh, agenda items. Okay. Uh, did you want to uh, now speak about the uh, electric and railroad uh, right of way vegetation management plans? It's all yours. Okay. Educate so, us. So at the last Board of Health meeting, uh, the board raised concerns about consideration for wildlife 
in, in the uh, completion of those plans, especially as herbicides are applied. Uh, and we still had time to get comments in. We were, we were meeting on a Monday, June 18th, we had an, or 17th, and we had until that Friday submit com to submit comments. So I submitted another round of comment letters. Um, one to Eversource regarding the electric transmission right-of-way and one to Mass Coastal Railroad through the consultant concerning the railroad right-of-way. And uh, copies of each also went to the Department of Agriculture, who's the sole regulating authority. And uh, those comment letters, which were included in your packets, those expressed the wildlife concerns. And I, I let them know that we have subject matter experts on board. Um, we have... Um, Larry is a retired veterinarian, so it's more than just people who are passionate about this. It's people who have expertise in the area, and uh, Eric is a horticulture teacher and a mass certified horticulturist, so you know he had uh, suggestions on how they could revise the herbicide application schedule. So you know, that was, I felt that was important to relay what we feel, or what a board member feels they could possibly do differently, and also what his background is his background of expertise in that area. So I submitted those, and we already received a response from TEC Associates, a response letter included in your packets. TEC Associates is the consultant the railroad uses, so Eversource has in-house staff prepare their vegetation management plan. Mass Coastal Railroad uses a consultant. So the consultant's already replied, and, and you have a copy of that letter, and uh, he speaks to the, the wildlife issue. Uh, he speaks to both of our comment letters. So to stay on the wildlife issue, he talks about not being able to revise the herbicide application schedule, in, in his opinion, because of the time during which vegetation grows. And, and he had a, a difference of opinion on um, when the herbicides are most effective. So um, but he did comment on it. And then he also commented on our original concerns about um, herbicides being used in general and what alternative techniques there might be. And um, so there are a couple of techniques. He talked about laser and electric current applications, which are being tested, but mainly in agricultural settings. And there's no equipment yet to use that on a, a railroad right-of-way or railroad tracks. And the one other item I included for you besides the letters was there's uh, one page of the Massachusetts Coastal Railroad Vegetation Management Plan, and that's the five-year plan. So, so that you haven't seen in a couple of years because we're within that five years, but there are, um, it's the one with the bold outline that you have. And in there they speak about some other alternative methods that have been tried besides herbicides for vegetation management that have failed. So uh, things are being considered, but nothing's been shown to be effective yet. So I just wanted to be, have the board be aware of the latest. Does that surprise you at all or not? I mean, the response? Uh, the response doesn't surprise me because in, in regard to what's in the vegetation management plan, yeah. I've, I've read that several times before. <laughs> Okay. And, and I've discussed that with the consultant on the phone. Uh, the, the newer ideas of um, the electric current and, and the light, um, perhaps that holds some promise for the future. I did a little bit of online research just to see where it's being used and what the equipment looks like. And, and I can see the point of the consultant that I don't, as a layperson, I don't see how it would work on a railroad track, at least not now. So. Right. Maybe, maybe some of these ideas will hold um, you know, some promise for the future. Carl, um, it seems as if this is probably the most prompt and maybe one of the only responses you've received to our letters with comments about the, uh, the management plans. Uh, I'm sorry, Mary, do you mean the, the only time we've received a response or the only time we've received it so timely? Both. Both. Okay. We have received some comment letters in the past. It's been a little while, been a few years. I, uh, I think I provided them to the board. Uh, but TEC Associates, who is the railroad consultant, um, has responded. Uh, this is at least their third response. So they've been pretty good in that regard. Um, but, but as you mentioned, I think this is the uh, quickest turnaround we've ever had. Anyone else? 
I would say this, Mr. Chairman, if nothing else, both entities are, are now understand that this board takes it seriously, they are watching, and there's an opportunity to give suggestions and recommendations, and they've, you've done exactly that. Whether we move the needle or not, uh, we don't know. It's a big organization. It's been historically, um, they have systems in place that I'm not sure it's like anything else, a comment period, but with, the message was sent that in fact the Yarmouth Board of Health was watching and we have recommendations, valid you know, recommendations and concerns, and they'd like them to be considered. The, the outcome, you know, it's control the controllables. There's only so much that we can, that you as a board can control, but you gave your recommendations. And I think, I think that's, that's important and that's the function that you, the role that you play. Good point, I'm sure a lot of boards don't even pay attention exactly. to it. Exactly, many of these, I'm sure, get filed, right? But you've responded. <laughs> And, and Carl does a great job on, on that in, in so much detail. So thank you, Carl. Uh, thank yes, you. thank you, You're Carl. Welcome. As I mentioned in the email, it was a great idea for you to just put in the backgrounds of Eric and Larry and, and the expertise. It was a great idea to do that. Thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate uh, Eric and Larry getting back to me so quickly. I know that was kind of a hectic week uh, because we didn't have much time before the comment deadline. But uh, thank you, Eric, and thank you, Larry, who's thank not you. here. Thank yeah. you. I, I was a little disappointed, you know, in reading their response. I did a just some brief research this afternoon about the most effective timing for perennial weed control. And I have uh, University of Delaware, Penn State, Iowa State, North Carolina State, University of Missouri, and University of Nebraska that by and large state that late summer into fall is the most effective right. timing of herbicide application for those tough to control weeds, so. All right, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, thanks. That'll be our next letter. Yep. <laughs> yeah, probably with the article or two or whatever, yeah. the website, right. a copy of it, right. a link to it or right. something, yeah. yeah. Sure. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. Anything else? I was just going to mention that my, my thought was the same, that perhaps Eric's additional research could be included in next year's letter. Mm -hmm. And I also just wanted to mention that while the, the regulation that um, governs the development of these plans, it does provide for comment periods, but it doesn't require that anyone respond to our comments. So in, in, when we don't get a response, no one's violating any regulation, so we can just um, hope we receive one. Well, it could be for our mental health then, at least. I don't know. Yeah, we haven't made any progress, but we're doing our job. So the board upheld their responsibility. They looked it over and they responded. Yeah. That's okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Carl. You. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, number two here is a public health excellence grant. And Great. maybe you can open sure. up on this. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, historically, public health has been widely misunderstood as a result. It's been significantly under-resourced, um, perhaps underappreciated, but certainly local public health, the 351 communities, they struggle right, to be able to have the resources to be able to, to address, protect, and uh, educate the community on, on the wide variety. The margins just keep moving, right, wider and wider on public health. And we have something here, uh, Katie O'Neill from uh, the Barnstable County, to be able to strengthen the, the infrastructure in public health, especially for you know, the, our Cape communities, um, shared resources. She's going to give us an overview, uh, kind of a, a working plan of, I think, I'm hoping that perhaps the board might want to participate in and Katie will go into detail of what that would look like, a grant. There's no financial outlay to this board or to the town or to the, uh, the residents in, in Yarmouth, but we're able to share resources and credentialing and training and, uh, I could say, cross-credentialing. I'm going to leave a lot of this up to, up to Katie, but I think it's a great opportunity at least to be able to have the discussion and, and potentially to participate. So I'm gonna, I'll turn this over to Katie O'Neill. Thank you, that's a great introduction. Uh, Katie O'Neill, Shared Services Program Manager for Barnstable County. Um, I sent a power, oh perfect, <clears throat> beat me to it. 
Okay, um, that's a great overview, thank you, of the Public Health Excellence. Uh, the Public Health Excellence, or the PHE, is designed really to share staff, um, share resources, and really approve the effectiveness and the efficiencies of public health to expand not only opportunities, but services. The PHE grant was formed as a result of the SAFE program, of the State Action for Public Health Excellence, which was enacted on the recommendation um, of the Blueprint for Public Health. In 2016, there was a special commission uh, that basically was put in place to study public health and determine if boards of health and health departments were actually doing what they're supposed to be doing statutorily. In 2019, they came out with the report and they found that unfortunately, a lot of the communities weren't able to get all the inspections done they needed to do, do the licensing. Um, there were big gaps in, in what health departments and boards of health should have been doing. Um, and what they're actually able to do, whether it's funding, staffing, training, credentialing, and that was really highlighted when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Other recommendations that came out of the special commission were to really elevate the standards of boards of health and health departments, strengthen services, improve data and data sharing, um, set education and training standards for individuals that will be doing the inspections, um, as well as allocating the resources. We the state acknowledged that health departments have a lot to do and they need money to do that, which is shocking from the state. So the county applied to be part of the program and we received a little over $480,000 for the public health excellence and almost four hundred, uh, excuse me, almost $550,000 towards the training hub. The governance board is truly the entity that manages those funds and the governance board is comprised of all the health directors in the towns that are taking part in this program. Um, that doesn't mean they have to be the ones at every meeting. They can, they can have a designee. Um, so if you do take part, I would recommend that Jay would be your governance member, but if he couldn't come, he could send Barry or Carl or Phil or one of you. Um, but that's how it's set up with the existing towns right now. As Jay mentioned, there's no financial obligation. You don't have to put in your own money. Um, you just have to agree to the standards. And that's basically the monthly meeting. Whether Jay can go or he sends a designee, that's really the, um, the major requirement that you attend the monthly meeting. Um, and that you only spend money that's approved by the grant. <laughs> oh, sorry, I apologize. Um, if you wanna go back. Thank you. Um, it's supported through both state and federal tax dollars. That's what funds this pool of money. There's no penalty to withdraw. If you end up participating, you're not happy with the service, you can opt out. Um, the agreement, I believe, calls for 90 days. Um, both Board of Health and Board of Select, the Select Board would need to vote to not take part anymore, but there's no financial, um, you don't have to repay any of the funding. Um, next slide, please. So, Past funding has paid for training and credentialing, um, MHOA conference, which is expensive, especially if there's hotels, uh, MIHA is another really expensive conference that most health departments don't have a budget for. Uh, we've paid to have a soil evaluator training done for several staff members, which is an expensive training. We've paid to have the registered sanitarian credential completed as well as the prep courses. We've done a lot of public health screening and wellness clinics, and that paid for the nurses' times, that um, paid for all of the medical equipment, so glucose test strips, um, the bone density uh, machine needs a gel, it pays for that. Um, it pays for firefighting, monitoring, um, and also it, it did pay for swag. That, that might change as an allowable expense moving forward. We've partnered up with the Medical Reserve Corps, the MRC, and we've actually worked with um, a retired ER, ER physician who comes to some of our, cl uh, our clinics, um, an acknowledgement that there's a huge primary care gap right now. Um, a lot of individuals um, don't have a, a, a primary care physician right now, or they can't get in for another year, and they know they need a renewal on their blood pressure medicine or their um, glucose medicine or, you know, insert X that you can't get to your physician for. Um, and he's partnered up with the MRC and with our nurses um, and been able to bridge that gap for individuals. That's a really great program that we've done. Um, we've purchased several community refrigerators for towns. 
Um, we fund a shared health inspector. We were able to fund an increase in the summer sanitarians time. We purchased inspection supplies. Uh, we've purchased inspectional software and um, it didn't make it on, on this slide, but we are doing a lower CAPE needs assessment right now. Um, the first few years of this grant, the state really wanted the towns to make sure that the staff were credentialed appropriately. Um, the lower CAPE towns are fully funded for, for um, credentialing. They all meet the registered sanitarian requirement. Um, their inspections are up to par with what the state is requiring. Um, and they wanted to know what wellness programs they could do in the future that would be worthwhile. Um, so the state agreed to pay for a needs assessment for those communities to make sure that as this program moves forward, we're getting the best bang for our buck. Um, it's going on right now. We hope to have the results by the end of July. That will all be public. Happy to share that with you if you're interested. Um, but it's really been a great opportunity. Excuse me if you want to, next slide, please. For future funding, um, we'll continue to pay for the trainings and education as needed for those towns that still need to get the credentialing. Um, we plan to have the screenings and wellness clinics continue. We've also put in to have a community health educator on staff, um, which we hope to get approval for. And they would really be involved in the community. They would be out there running programs, um, working with the towns and, and really hitting those, those niche areas that right now health departments aren't able to do with their day-to-day -day time. We'll continue to fund the shared health inspector um, and up the other wellness programs that we're currently doing. Next slide, please. So the performance standards are part of what the state looks at for all the communities that take part in this grant program. Uh, the state on average met 78% of the required standards. Um, I know it might be kind of small. The orange areas are the towns that meet the less than 75%. And then the dark blue, which you can see the CAPE is greater than 85%. Next slide, please. So as you can see, the CAPE's already doing really well. We're meeting 87% uh, of the performance standards that the state is looking at. Um, that's why we have an opportunity to do some of these wellness programs a little earlier than some of the other communities where they really have to focus on educating their staff and credentialing. Next slide, please. So the states, if you, the steps if you do choose to participate in the grant program would be to vote to sign a letter of commitment. It would be both the select board and the board of health. You would have to provide capacity assessment data. Um, and that's basically just, um, guided by the state what they're looking at. It's just a snapshot of what's going on. Um, they want to see, you know, have you done a few restaurant inspections? Um, I was actually a health director for a separate town and had to do the capacity assessment. It sounds daunting. It's really not too bad. It's just pulling a few things um, and just showing the state whether you're having trouble um, and if you're not, just giving them the documents. It's, it's a way for the state to see um, where they can help where they can help you and where the grant program can come in and assist as needed. Um, once that's done, uh, an interim municipal or an IMA would need to be signed. Um, and as I mentioned, the regular governance board meeting um, is a requirement. Um, eventually, the performance standards need to be met, which I believe you're already meeting with your staffing. So you can check that off. <laughs> And that's really a high overview of the Public Health Excellence Grant. If you want to, next slide, please. Um, if there are any questions, I know I just threw a lot of information at you very quickly. The commission was active in doing this in 2019? Their recommendation came out in 19, so they were looking at it between 2016 and 2019, and their final recommendation came out in 2019. Yeah. I don't recall, did we get some information or feedback about our town and how we were doing and what the, was happening in the state? I don't recall receiving it. Um, I can look into that for you. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. I don't believe they reached out to individual towns with their results, but I can find out. Um, this sounds great. I'm not sure why a town would not participate. Right. <laughs> great couple things if I could yeah. um, there's two things that jump out one if you could explain to the board uh, when there's a, a map of the Cape there are uh, several communities that are not if you could maybe just uh, show where uh, um, 
who is not who who of the 15 are participating sure. um, and then the other piece Katie if you could explain I think there's a misperception that shared resources meaning Yarmouth will take some of our inspectors and go to you name it Truro uh, and back and forth amongst that and, and that's just not the case but could you explain when you say shared resources Absolutely. what what that is yes that, that is a so, great question so the number of the, the, the communities that participate participating Who's participating in this program, and then um, what the shared, whether epidemiologist, the shared inspector, it's not amongst, it's not taking from one community, um, but it's adding to. Correct. Yes, okay. thank you. Those are both great questions. Um, so on the map, the only four communities that aren't currently taking part are Yarmouth, Barnstable, Falmouth, and Bourne. Um, and, and that's exactly it. There is a big misperception on the shared staff. I, I think a lot of those other communities thought because they're larger, they have more staff, they would have to pool their staff. That's not the case at all. Um, we fund the shared health inspector. Um, we have Donna. She is a county employee. She is the additional shared inspector. So what happens is uh, a town or health agent health inspector says, I'm going on vacation on these dates. Can you please cover our town? And we put it in. Um, same with um, the epidemiologist we have on staff is, is county funded, so it's a little separate. But if you have an issue, you put in the request. It's not your staff. It's not town specific staff. It's additional county staff that bridge that gap. Thank you for that question. Because that is definitely a misconception that a lot of the other towns have that we're trying to communicate. <laughs> Right, and and I think the mention the, who's not participating the larger communities in Yarmouth we're, we're staff, but we are clearly would want to be taking on more. But I just think even say that the training that's available to us, um, the epidemiologist is something I'd be very interested in being able to share information and data, right ac across not just in our community but across the Cape. The needs assessment is something that you know I mean, hospitals do it on a, every three to five years or probably every three years is their commitment. Um, just to have a pulse and not, don't anecdotally look at what what we think the issues are, mental health or hunger or thing, whatever those things are. You no, know, we have hard data that we just say, okay, this is our this is what's going to be in our top drawer. Absolutely. These are the things so that needs assess community needs assessment is significant because it may vary across the Cape. You know, further down the Cape, there may be something else. Mm -hmm. But y Yarmouth, um, if, if we're able to participate, if the board sees that there's there's value, right? We can add value here, and there's a benefit to us. Um, certainly, I, I think it would help. It would help our group as far as cred uh, credentialing and training, and just shared information. Be able to sit at these meetings, and to be able to hear. There's just value. There's just it's, it's beneficial to hear what other uh, and there's some problems on what other what other communities are facing and and how they're going about. Uh, you know, educating the community and, and, and collaborations are important, right? Absolutely. And, and it comes with the training hub. So um, that the state's a little slower with that rollout right now, but um, eventually there'll be uh, food, housing, uh, Title V, and a general sanitarian, which would do um, pools, camps, body art, tobacco, that, that type of deal. Um, it's basically free training for any health department staff that want to be involved. Um, it comes with the credentialing if staff members don't happen to have it. It pays for any CEUs. Um, we have a ton of shared equipment that you wouldn't necessarily need to have in every health department. So we have a few septic cameras. We have probes. We have pH meters. We're looking at buying um, mercury test kits. Um, so the training hub has a lot of equipment that, that you would have access to for free as well. The other thing, if I could, I'm hearing you talk. I just like to hear you to, for you to say from the board and the community listening at home. This doesn't supplant any a, any inspectors Her. that we have now, where we say, "Well, now we don't need an inspector to do this, Correct. right?" This is in addition to. In addition, if Correct. you could just absolutely you know. no supplanting. That's the um, number one for the grant. You can't supplant your municipal funds. It's just to increase your services that you're already providing. Right. So. Do you think the mechanism would be mainly requests from the board and from the health department, or it's your findings to say what we do need and that, and we're not doing something? Um, how the money's spent is that is that your yeah? Question? In other words, if we're not doing something that you pick up on, uh, or let's say Jay knows he needs something and doesn't have access to it, so does it, it's going both ways, or you're just waiting to hear from us, or so what? Um, so what if? 
if you're are you asking how to get involved in the grant and become a member or once assuming we're a member so assume you're a member um so said say you have a problem um jay would have to come to the governance board and ask for the official um approval to, to have the funds unless it's something that we already pay for so if jay needed the septic camera or the mercury detector or you know insert x that we already have okay. he just gives me a call i drop it off and you're good to go um, something like a wellness clinic, you know, we can certainly get scheduled. We try to look at the schedule with the other surrounding communities. You don't want to have too many in, in such a tight area, but if Jay wanted to host a wellness clinic, he would give me a call and say, we'd love to do um, a vaccine clinic or a blood pressure clinic or um, anything like that, and we would just get it scheduled. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Jay, do we need a formal vote tonight? I, I, I believe you do. A, Maybe Katie, you could walk through. Uh, is there a letter of commitment that sure. that you could Absolutely. forward to me? Is I, that explain how that how it would be that there would be a letter? Or I, I can come up with one, but I'm assuming you have a boilerplate. Yeah. Yes, we have. Uh, the state has a, a letter of commitment. Um, I can send you a copy of it if the board is interested. Okay. Um, it would need an official official vote. It doesn't right. lock you in in any way, other than um, it shows that your intention is to to join join the group. Um, and at that point, you would be expected to do the capacity assessment down the road. I don't think they're doing it again for another year or two, um, but that would be the next step. Oh, that's great, that'll facilitate things. If I could though, um, rather than wait, if, if I, it, maybe you wanted to deliberate, but if the board were to be ready to take a vote, so that I could, I could move that along, or we don't have to wait for the letter in order to take the vote, if that's possible. Yeah. Well, people are okay with doing that? Yes. I am. Yep. You wouldn't want to make a motion, just that we're interested? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so just for, for clarification, were we intending to request the letter of commitment or just express our interest in joining the program? I think it's to express it. Would it not? And just, and we'll produce a letter that's separate, but we're just, okay. we're, we're sort of voting on whether we want if you participate and then we'll formalize that through a, a letter of commitment right uh i move that we uh, that the yarmouth board of health takes part in the uh, cape public health collaborative intermunicipal agreement is there a second to that motion just to sorry point of order it just sure. be the letter of um commitment at this point i'd have to come back okay. for the in, at the ima that would be the next step so, so what's the cadence to that? Maybe you could explain. I appreciate you making this motion. So there's a, a letter of intent or a commitment from the board. Correct. It then goes to the, the selectmen will, would yeah. sign the intermunicipal. Uh, you'll both eventually sign the, munis, um, the IMA and the commitment. Okay. Um, so we'll come back to the board any, regardless. Re regardless. The first step in this, Correct. dipping our toe in the water, is to say, we're going to put a letter, of, if the board were to, I don't want to presuppose their vote, but if they were to vote affirmatively, that it would be the letter of intent. That's correct. Okay. The select board has to agree with us. And the, there yeah. you go. Yep. Sure. Does that motion suffice? That's it. <laughs> it does. Okay. Okay. Sorry Thank about you. that. No worries. Thank yeah. you. Hi. <laughs> Great. So someone second it or not? Second. Second. Go for it. There we go. All right. All in favor of the motion, just raise your hand. Say aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Aye. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, yeah, and we're clear. excited to have have you all on board. I, I really, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, to the board, I, I, this is going to help some infrastructure for uh, for us, and to be part of the other. Well, how, it's not quite fifty. So, it's twelve communities on the Cape that are participating. Uh, now it would be twelve. Yes. We become twelve. Terrific. I look forward to being at the meetings. Very excited. Yeah. Glad to have you. Thanks so much for being here. Actually, you can stay put. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, <laughs> the, you're the, you, um, Katie's going to be here for the next subject. Okay. How do you feel about that? Okay. <laughs> you at least get again? a t-shirt or something. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You'll come <laughs> up with something. Don't some worry. snacks or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, just again, for the record, Katie O'Neill, Barnesville County Shared Services Program Manager. Um, the individual who runs the water program was not able to make it this evening, but she did write up a lovely piece that I would love to read to you. Um, I'm happy to answer some questions, um, and if I can't, I will make sure we get the answer to you. Um, so just a little background, Barnesville County has been monitoring Cape Cod's beach water quality for over 30 years. 
In 2002, the efforts were formalized and expanded as the results of amendments to the Clean Water Act that were passed to improve the water quality of coastal recreational waters. Barnesville County receives funding from the U.S. EPA through the uh, Mass Department of Public Health to conduct sampling and bacterial analysis of public marine beach water. In addition, the program is offered to semi-public semi beach operators, uh, such as residential homeowners association, motels, hotels, for a low per sample cost. Barnesville County samples 23 saltwater and six freshwater public beaches, as well as five semi-public beaches in the town of Yarmouth every week during the summer months between June and August. We test the water for two different types of fecal bacteria, enterococcus in marine water and E. coli in freshwater. It's important to note that these two bacteria are considered indicator organisms, which as their name implies, are used to indicate the presence of conditions that have the potential to cause illness. Both organisms are found in the intestine of warm-blooded animals, including humans. Their presence in recreational waters suggests that other human harmful, excuse me, harmful organisms and viruses might be present. If pathogens are inadvertently ingested while swimming, they may cause a variety of diseases, the most common of which is a mild gastroenteritis with flu-like symptoms. This can be inconvenient and even dangerous, especially to those who are immunocompromised. Stormwater runoff is a dominant cause for elevated indicated bacterial levels. Runoff causes pollutants from road and other paid surfaces to the surface water of beaches and ponds. Other possible causes of fecal contamination of recreational waters are animal waste from pets and wild animals. Common waste observed on beaches can be from dogs, geese, ducks, seagulls, seals, and fox. In order to adequately protect beachgoers, Cape Wide maintained compliance with Massachusetts Bathing Beach Regulation 105 CMR 445. Barnstable County utilizes a seasonal staff of six bathing beach samplers and analysts to collect and analyze weekly beach water samples. The samples are delivered to the water quality laboratory and analyzed for the indicator organisms described above. If the bacterial standards outlined in the regulations are exceeded, a sampler is deployed immediately to collect a retest. Based on recent amendments to the bathing beach regulation, the beach may remain open unless the results of the retest indicate levels higher than the Massachusetts standard. When a beach resample test exceeds the limit for bacteria, the program notifies the health agent in the town where the beach is located, and they have 24 hours to ensure that the beach is closed to swimming. When the second retest results show acceptable bacterial levels, the beach may reopen to swimming. Barnstable County residents are encouraged to visit our website for more information on our program, and daily results are updated for the water quality. Happy to answer any question. Attempt to answer any questions. <laughs> So in your pack that was delivered, you can see it's up on the screen now for the community to see. But we, we received another one of these today. So these come in on a regular basis, um, the sampling that Katie talked about. The other, the other uh, point of information that the board should be aware and the community listening, that on the homepage for the website for the town, there is now a link. Actually, there's a button at the very top, which is beach sampling results. And it links immediately to Barnesville so that and for the uh, state DPH uh, results that they have, their dashboard as well. So the community can readily, they don't have to be calling, they don't have to be waiting for a sample, or um, if they have any question, come go to the, the homepage of the Yarmouth, uh, the town of Yarmouth, immediately at the top, beach sampling results, and it'll, it'll drive right to Barnstable's uh, lab results. Do we know what's the most likely source of the bacterial contamination, which was high at this one beach, Englewood Beach? Um, so the uh, individual who runs the program, um, you, you never know the exact cause, unfortunately. Um, some beaches do happen to fail more than other. Her thought was that there is uh, a drainage pipe between um, the two roads, um, and she thought that the heavy rain periods could have been the contributing factor. Um, you never really know the exact cause, but that was her thought. Thank you. So I'm, I'm confused. How, how does this um, how does this work with the sampling that the health department does? No, we don't. The, the county Is, does the sampling. We only do the sampling at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the season okay. when there's not. Uh, 
the, the summer intern sampler, and then at the end of the year when the sampler goes back to college. So Phil and myself okay. do the sampling just twice a year. It's the same sampling. Okay. So, so this, program, Thank you. this program doesn't start until June, um, and most beaches want to open for Memorial Day weekend. It, and Mary, this great question though. So we do in the other part too is just to instruct the intern as to where these where these beaches are, so they have some logistics as to where they're going, where to be sampling, not necessarily how to be sampling, but each location they're they're across all of Barnstable County, so they need to know all the locations within. What was the number that you had within Yarmouth? Uh, Yarmouth was twenty five, yeah. uh, twenty three saltwater and six freshwater. Yeah. So they may not be familiar with this community, so we had to, you know, instruct them, and the intern is doing that now. And um, it's very timely. I mean, resampling happens. We get, I get these emails on a regular basis. Um, but it's, the community will be able to instantly access the information for the, um, on the website. Thank you. Anyone? Okay. Unless you want to stay for something else, no, Perfect. you're out. Thank you're you. out of here. Okay. Thank you so, so much. To, to close, in. yeah, to close the loop, you'll you'll send me the letter. I'll we'll send you the letter. And did we did we take a? We're good on everything. Yes. And I'll, I'll yes. put this I'll put this around to everyone to sign, right? Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Katie. Okay. Next up is Association to Preserve Cape Cod. This is just an update. APCC, a which, which you had voted on um, probably two meetings ago, and the, the sign back, and I just wanted you to see that this is what we're getting on a regular basis. Um, the results uh, were acceptable, and uh, but that's another posting and community information should they have, uh, if there was sign back or, or an indication of such, it'll be on a map and it'll be also on the website. So I just wanted the board to be aware that they would follow through on the sampling. Okay, another update. And it's, um, it's over at 14 Albion. That was the combination of the property um, that you kind of spent a lot of time on. Um, so you want to yes. just fill us in and update or anything? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I did go out Friday to just uh, view the property as I got out there. Um, their contractor, Willie, one of the gentlemen that was a representative the night that we did decide to condemn the property, he was there uh, putting on a new front porch. Uh, he was getting ready to put on a new rear porch. He did walk me through the home. The home has been completely gutted. Um, the sheetrock, the, there was a company that came in to disinfect all the walls and everything. Um, they're, they're making great progress. Outside in the yard had been cleaned up. There was just left was one derelict vehicle and a forerunner ATV kind of back in the woods and just a few other things, but they, they've made great progress over there. Um, it's definitely not anywhere near habitable yet, but they're, they're making progress to move forward to be compliant with, with the health de um, department. Excellent. Good. Um, Mary? Each week, I, I called Nancy Johnson, who, if you recall, was the owner. Her son, Scott, appeared here just for updates on so that it doesn't get lost or fall through the cracks. Each week, I, I call her. And as uh, Barry said, that we're, we're making inspections periodically just to make sure it's moving along. Because uh, the neighbors are concerned. It, it was a, an eyesore. There was a quality of life issue over there, but it has certainly uh, turned a corner. More work to, be com to, to come, but, uh, but it's making progress. Where's and all the money coming uh, for all of this? Through the landlord, through the owner. Not through us. Yeah. It's expensive cleanup and then also obviously building. But okay. Great. Okay. Uh, number eight, take awareness. Barry. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, right now is peak tick season. They're out of their larva stage and on to their, the next stage. If you take a ballpoint pen and put a dot on your hand, that's the size they are right now. It looks like a freckle. It looks almost like um, a speck of dirt. It's, you have to be very cautious when you're out there. Um, I have a couple slides, like where to look, and people mostly, when they go, they just kind of quickly check themselves. They should really be thorough on checking themselves for ticks behind the ears, 
along the hairline, back of the neck, armpits, groin areas, legs, behind knees, between your toes, um, stuff like that. Light colored clothing is best. That way you can see them. Again, they're very tiny, they're dark. And see it like that. Uh, we'll go to the next one. Uh, Lyme disease is very potent around here and on the Cape. They like to stay, this time of year they're in the, the lower, the, the, the grasses, they haven't gone up to the trees yet. That's their next phase in the fall when they move up to the tree lines. Um, if, you just, if you get bitten, uh, don't squeeze the tick or squash it, don't burn it or put a match to it, cover with Vaseline, use tweezers to take it off, pull the tick straight out um, with a steady even pressure disinfectant. Save the tick if you can. If um, save the tick if you can, and that way you can decipher what it is. I gave you a QR code. I don't. I just got it. I don't have a picture of it yet. I apologize, but I do have it out here on the uh, our information board. It's a uh, University of Rhode Island. Um, we will have this the QR code up on our website. Uh, University of Rhode Island has a QR code. If you take a picture of the QR code and you can take a picture of the the tick, it's. It, it identify exactly what kind of tick it is. So if you do go to your primary carrier, to your doctor, that's just even more information they can have. Um, try to save it as much as you can. It's there. They're pretty bad. They're they're across the country. Ticks. There's different brands and all over across the country. But with that QR code, it's nice. So if you just go to your primary carrier and say, "I I got bit by a tick," they're gonna say, "Well, what kind?" And if you took it and flush it down the toilet or something, you don't know. So that uh, time and date and where on your body you, you took it off is, is also really good. Other information we have um, right out front of our health department is the, the one bite, don't uh, change your life. On the back, there's, uh, again, tick removal. There's some facts. But some of the resources, um, where you can send the tick to, the bottom one, Larry Daspy of the Cape Cod Cooperative um, Extension, his number is 508-375-6642. Uh, once again, Larry Dasby, Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. He is a, a tick whisperer. He's, he knows all sorts of information about ticks. Yeah, we had um, brought him in once for a lecture. I, this is years ago. I bring him in again. He's so... Rude. If they have more information on that, um, there's also the, the laboratory where to send it, the Mass part, uh, Public Health, where to go for to send ticks also. Um, it's, it's scary how I, I have a, a new dog and I take her for walks around the bog and I try to be as preventive as I can and I'll, I'll get two or three off myself, four or five off my, my puppy when I'm done. So they're, they're out there. You just have to be very mindful of, of the ticks that are out there. Again, right now, uh, spring, we're in high season and then back in fall is, uh, the second high the next life cycle of a, of a tick. They're usually about two, two and a half year life cycles for a tick. So it's, uh, stay out of tall grass. Try not to brush if you're in the outside. Try not to brush up against trees and stuff like that. Um, mulch around your home is very good. Ticks don't like to cross mulch, I found out in my, my research. Um, just keep grass down low, um, stuff like that. Eric might have, you have any more information off the top of your head on ticks? I'm sure you do. I have also a new dog owner, so it's something we were really concerned about. Um, I'm not big on pesticide application at my house, but um, cedar oil is a good natural remedy. Um, you can apply it on yourself, your clothing. You can add it to your laundry detergent, add it, put it on your pet. Um, and you can spray the yard with it. It's not as effective as some of the heavy-duty chemical-based yeah. applications. Um, it does require repeat applications, but knock on wood, I, I saw several ticks. It seems to be a particularly bad year, but I've done two applications of the oil, and I haven't had any issues in my yard since then. So. And the prothethene out there, it's, it works great, but if you get it on your skin, that can be harmful. Um, DEET, anything like that, even if you go just your general offs, your sprays like that, it, it's a, a deterrent uh, if you're out walking your dogs or out 
exploring hiking anything like that highly recommend it just for your safety even if it's an all natural organic like he said the peppermint oil and stuff like that that repels them too just something little that you if you take that extra two minutes could prevent a lifetime of illness and they have some out there now um i forget that that causes you can't eat ever eat red meat again i mean some people that might not be a big deal but some people like myself that's <laughs> that's a game changer um, arthritis, joints, pains and joints, swelling. There's a lot of issues with um, with the with tick bites. So please be careful out there. Um, take that extra second to just cover yourself in a little repellent and watch where you go. Barry, you took a some. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Um, I I had never heard that ticks go up in the trees. Tell me a little bit more about that. That's uh, in their second life cycle. That's once they go from the the ground they, and they start the more mature they go up into the trees so that's kind of where they like to get the taller animals instead of walking through the ground when the especially like deer when they go through the woods with their right. antlers right. ticks don't jump they once they get knocked once they get brushed up <clears> against that <throat> and they fall onto your to their their prey is what they're looking for so um they don't go like all the way up in trees but like they get right to the tree lines where you can brush up against it, so they're they're smart. They know where to find their their right. food sources. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, Jay. Barry, just a quick. You went to a seminar or you watched a, 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 yes. a webinar on this. What would be the indication if someone would? What would it look like? The target um, that would draw, uh, prompt someone to say, you know what, this probably needs some medical attention, uh, just so the community understands if a child or a or an individual, anyone who ha who has a, a tick bite. Um, what are the symptoms they, they see that if after a day or two, what would prompt someone to go to get to seek potentially seek medical so attention? First one, like you can you see that if you see the tick, you can get it off. Um, again, if you try to pull it out, pull the entire body out, just not the you want to get the head and everything. Um, Lyme disease is a very prominent bullseye. Um, that's right where it gets bit. That so, I actually had Lyme disease probably 15 years ago. I didn't even know it. I didn't even feel it. That was 4th of July. I took off my shirt to go to the beach. My wife said, what did you get hit by? I was like, I don't know. And I had a perfect bullseye on my back. So went right to the hospital. Um, so the bullseye, uh, rash, aches, pains. Um, you can see the swells up a little bit. Tick bites are a little different from fly, mosquitoes, um, other uh, like bites like that, where like a mosquito gets a little bit bigger, more rounded. Uh, tick bites are a little more impacted and centralized. So, so yeah, just definitely try to try to, if you have a vessel to keep it in to get tested, the Cape Cod hospital, if you take it down there, if you do get bit and you concerned, you can take it down there. They have a laboratory down there. They can test it for you also to see if it's disease carrying. So tough. Yeah, I mean, with the size of these things. I, I was surprised when I did my, when I was in my seminar, they said to take a, take a ballpoint pen and put it on your hand. That's how small they are right now. So. All right. A new and old business, anyone? I, I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, two meetings ago, you, you brought in, um, you reviewed the grant applications for the human service grants, if you recall. Uh, twelve different agencies came forward, and th through your deliberations, you were able to fund all twelve, right? Sixty thousand dollars was divided up amongst twelve agencies. Well, through a, uh, came to our attention, unfortunately, and on our part, a, uh, a clerical error happened on our part where an application, a grant application was put in on time, but, but did not come before the board. So. I would, I would like to ask, and Mary, I apologize. Um, you're not seeing this because this just came to our attention. We have it at your seat here, but I, I will get it to you. It's from Duffy, and Duffy has been a, an applicant in the past. And I would ask the board if they could, it would be actually in line with your funding to, if, if the board were so inclined to take the uh, 2561 that you had previously allocated to potentially support the the hoarding network, the, that resource services, that network to help with hoarding, that maybe that could be brought over to uh, 
to address and, and support Duffy's application. And Mary, right on the front page of the application, it, it does mention the number of uh, Yarmouth residents served, and that's 604. They've it's got, a lot. Yeah, they got uh, 81 full time on the staff, part time 12, five volunteers, and they had actually requested $10,000. It's just it's the a, background. If this is Mary. for their navigator, um, and if you look at it, it that funding of 25. Uh, just north of 25 would be on the last page. You can see that's very much in line with so what some of the other communities are doing. Um, uh, Brewster, Harwich, Sandwich, Orleans, um, and the other, just so the board is aware, the uh, Duffy does receive funding from the opioid dollars that are a different, it's WISAC, not from, from this board here, but they do receive other Yarmouth funding. Um, so that's, again, I apologize, it was not, uh, not intentional by any means, but fortunately we caught it, and, um, and thankfully there, there, is a, there is some funding for, through the hoarding um, task force that you were, network, I think they have a resource group that you were going to allocate, and that's, uh, Rather than opening everything up to be able to put that over, would be uh, would satisfy uh, that. Um, yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. You had reminded me that you know, uh, with hoarding, it, it they're in their infancy trying to get this thing up and running again. So it's early, right? They they didn't have earmarked for that. Well, then that will take care to pay for yeah. a, a, a half of FTE or any of that kind. There wasn't any of that. It, it was thinking, that, and again, that that issue does not go away. Hoarding does, is not, it's still to, be, uh, still to be determined how we're going to uh, innovatively, you know, collectively with some, uh, with some of the nonprofits and some of the nonprofits that you funded here to be able to address that. Um, but they put in a grant application, the board listened to all 12, and there were actually 13, and I wanted the board to be aware of that. We could also allocate next time, I mean, to certainly you know, forwarding, can. we can certainly do that. So this seems pretty straightforward. It seems like a very reasonable thing to do from my standpoint, anyway. It does, there's an unprecedented number. This was the largest number of, of, of applications of grants recipients that you've, you've had. So maybe it says a little bit about what's going on in the community, um, the need, right? There's a lot of uncertainty and, uh, and concern. Any thoughts, anyone? I mean. I'm fine with doing that. I think that kind of works out okay. Eric, Charlie? I support it. Okay. Yeah. Do we need a formal vote on it or not? Okay. I, I'd, I'd appreciate that okay. only because you voted on the uh, yep. on the funding application, so that, that that would be part of the record. Right. So I guess the motion has to be that we're making that one specific change in allocation. Right. Anyone want to give I it? Move that, I want me to do it. I move yeah. that we um, allocate the two thousand five hundred and sixty-one dollars. I think it is. It is that we add um, left after allocating out to the twelve grantees that we first looked at. That we allocate that to Duffy, um, and look toward maybe next year thinking about the hoarding um, resource group. Well stated. Thank you. Second on that, anyone? Second. Great. Any other thoughts, anyone? None? Okay, all, all in favor, just raise your hand, say aye. 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 Okay, done, that was quick, perfect. Uh, I'm glad that worked out, good. Thank you for that, I appreciate that. Any other new or old business, anyone? Besides scheduling when people want to have the next meeting, that would be, August. we'll call August, that new business. August 5th, perhaps? That would be the first, uh, the first Monday? of August on the first anyone first Monday am I correct on that uh, yes yeah. you are correct yeah um, so well Monday is the 29th July next Monday is the 5th right so it's a, we have this room for the first and the third Mondays of each month. Right. So 
So if it's the first Monday, choice is what? The fifth or the 26th or what? Fifth. The fifth. First Monday, fifth. I certainly think that makes sense and not waiting. Let's just, I think if it's okay with everyone, we just have the one meeting in August. I'm fine with that. Right. We've got three people who will be able to make it. I, I certainly can. Yeah? yeah. You'd be able to make it? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, I know. <laughs> that's, well, that's true for all of us. Okay, so that'll be the next meeting then. Great. Anything else, anyone? I, I, I would say this, Mr. Chairman, you know, the community who's listening, the board understands that there's a lot of anxiety out in, the, in our community right now. There's a lot of uncertainty, not just in our community, but across across the country. And, and really a lot of uncertainty in, in the discourse. Individuals to, 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 to calm down, to make sure that in fact we care for one another and we look out for one another, especially during these times of uncertainty. There, there, there's financial concerns. There's all, there's a whole, we saw this here in our community not three, four, five months ago with the, the immigrant sightings and the issues that went on here. Emotions are running real high, and it's, it's, it's difficult. There's a lot of mental health and stress issues that come on. If, if we can just take time, this is a nice time on Cape Cod, right? This is a really nice time to enjoy and maybe demonstrate some kindness for one another and, and slow down a little bit. Maybe I think the board does that really well. There's, we have here in the town hall, there's a code of conduct, right? That this is what we expect. We want to be professional. We want to engage with the community. We want to help them. And, and many times it's educating them. It's not always saying yes to them, but we educate them. And that civility, that, that's, re that's really important. And that's what Yarmouth has been built on. Uh, the selectmen do it very well, our town administrator, um, but it just, underscoring what we saw this past weekend and we see it on a regular on an ongoing basis and just a reminder that everyone if they can to uh the kindness is really yeah important. by history summers are often the time things they're more uprisings they are summers and that goes yeah. back a long time yeah. in history so thanks for mentioning that yes yes well well spoken that's just a thought okay well, one more item that's number 10. I move we adjourn. Second someone? Second. All in favor? On aye. aye. Not bad. That's 60, 62 minutes, guys. Nice. <laughs> nice. Evening, Mary, everyone. we're thinking of you. Thank you. In a good way. Oh. That's right. <laughs> we are. Thank you. End.